I'm Sarah Meir and I'm a lecturer in English at Cambridge. In the last couple of years, my research on American literature has led me back here almost to my doorstep in Cambridge. I've always been envious of the way colleagues in Liverpool or Bristol or Lancaster can teach the history and literature of transatlantic slavery with reference to what happened in their own cities. But I've tended to assume that my city, Cambridge, has had a negligible role in black history. But then I started to think about the history of education. In the autumn of 1849, the new students at Queen's College, Cambridge, included one rather unusual man. Alexander Crummell was 30 years old, married with three children and the minister of a small Episcopal church in New York. He was also black, the son of an African-born former slave, Boston Crummell, and a free-born New Yorker, Charity Hicks. Alexander Crummell was part of an unusually dynamic generation of black New Yorkers, often the children of former slaves, who struggled to educate and better themselves, but also played significant roles in the American anti-slavery movement. Among his friends, Crummell was himself an outstanding figure. After his degree, Crummell spent nearly 20 years in Liberia as a teacher and priest, and was one of the first professors at Liberia College. In the United States after the Civil War, Crummell continued to be a spokesman for his community and a champion of higher education, especially in the face of segregation in the southern states. Crummell inspired his peers and subsequent generations, especially W.E.B. Du Bois, who devoted to Crummell a chapter of his most famous book, The Souls of Black Folk. But the key to Crummell's influence was his belief in education as the route to liberation for all people of African descent. And for Crummell, the highest point of his own education was his time at Cambridge. Crummell came to Britain at a time of committed transatlantic activism against slavery. He made friends in the movement who recognised Crummell's own thwarted desire for a higher education as part of the waste of talent produced by slavery and prejudice. Crummell himself revered the heroes of Britain's own abolition movement, William Wilberforce and Thomas Clarkson, who were both Cambridge graduates. And so a plan was made to raise the funds to put Crummell through a degree. He moved his family into a tiny house on an ancient lane near Queen's College and commenced his studies. We are still piecing together the history of black students in Cambridge. Cromwell was not the first. In the 18th century, the Jamaican Francis Williams studied unofficially with Cambridge tutors, and it is possible that wealthy West Africans may occasionally have found their way there in the 19th century, as we know they did to London and Glasgow. Crummell later met a black Briton who had been a near contemporary. But we do know that during Crummell's studies, a number of major African-American figures came to visit him. It was this that I found particularly striking. I teach the autobiographies of former slaves, William Wells Brown and Frederick Douglass, for instance. Both visited Crummell and reported their pride and hope that others from the community would follow in his footsteps at Cambridge. How was Crummell perceived in Cambridge itself? Evidence from diaries suggests that fellows and students were curious about him and his family. Some wished him well and sorrowed at the death of his four-year-old son. But the Crummells hired a servant and when Mrs Crummell dismissed her, all of Cambridge gossiped that the servant had cursed her mistress as a black devil. For me, the most astonishing thing was that American literature played a part in Crummell's reception. In 1852, an American anti-slavery novel took the world by storm. Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin brought slavery to the world's attention, and her cast of black fictional characters became internationally recognisable. It seems that Crummell's fellow students started to call him Topsy after a character in the novel. At Crummell's graduation ceremony, one of those students proposed three cheers for Topsy. Again, I teach Uncle Tom's Cabin, so this story was fascinating to me. 
But Cromwell's life seems to speak very powerfully to our own concerns, at a time when higher education and the role it plays in society is the subject of political debate and street demonstrations. Crummel would have argued fiercely against a purely individual, materialistic conception of education. His university degree was itself a powerful argument against slavery and prejudice, and afterwards he devoted his learning to the service of his people. <laughs>